very good afternoon everyone this is monish siripurapu i am the principal architect of ant studio we are based out of new delhi today i will be presenting a research on building envelopes inspired by vapor transpiration in trees we have been working on passive cooling in buildings integrated with evaporative cooling for the last few years and today i'll be discussing one of the projects in details as we all know refrigerant based air conditioners consume a lot of energy and are also causing emissions which are directly contributing to global warming and increase in global temperatures and contributing to rising temperatures all over the world because of a lot of other activities like construction automobile and emissions that are coming in the cities our cities are comparatively much hotter to rural and forest areas as part of the research what we are trying to look at is see if we can replicate what is otherwise found in nature and trees and see if building envelopes can actually behave like the foliage in trees which we'll talk more about in detail in the later part of the presentation coming from india especially in here last summers we have seen in delhi temperatures exceed more than 45 46 degrees which is very common here but one thing that is very notable all across the globe is that the moment we walk under a shade of a tree there is an instant drop in temperature that is mainly due to the foliage and the shade that is provided by the tree and also evapor transpiration that happens from the surface of the leaves and the ground keeping the temperatures low so one of the primary ideas behind the work is to see if we can take inspiration from the foliage of the trees in designing building schemes that can behave uh, similar to foliage where instead of trying to emit or reflect the radiation from the from the surface of the skins can it behave like the tree we never see a leaf in a tree getting heated up in a way the building facades can both shade and also provide cool air into the indoor space so the aim of the research what we are trying to see is to develop passive cooling envelopes inspired by nature and assess their impact on operational cooling loads and overall carbon footprint of the building and also see if we can achieve this with the help of low embodied energy materials like terracotta which we explored as part of this research traditionally climate played a very important role in the design of the building envelopes and facades in india this is an example from rajasthan jaipur hawa mahal where the facade is made with intricate jali patterns and systems wherein the idea is to cut the heat coming from the the sun with the help of the smaller apertures and also the design of the jali is such that it can also help in creating the the pressure difference in the cross section of the jali and we are all also very familiar with the earthen pots which are traditionally used for drinking water the water inside the pot remains naturally cool because of the latent heat transfer from the surface of these earthen pots and this system is used back in the days in egypt the slaves used to fan the surface of the pots for the forests to provide cooling and in the work that we are doing right now we have seen terracotta being a very important material that kind of facilitates this we wanted to use the same principle of cooling but instead of trying to cool water that is in the drinking pots can be cool air instead from the surface of these pots by playing with the geometry and we picked terracotta as the material because one this is locally available and in the initial studies we have worked with local potters and communities to create this and the material inherently is porous in nature which helps retaining the water inside the material that can help in vapor transpiration from the surface and this is also low embodied carbon material and abundantly available and in the construction industry terracotta is widely used it is robust and it can last longer when compared to other materials like hay or cooling pads that are used in the cooling industry the idea that we have explored in, as part of this research is to see if we can combine a jali or the building envelopes with evaporative cooling and for this we have tried different systems a couple of systems which are open where the water is being circulated from the top of the system and other solutions where we try to integrate water from the inside of the system trying to replicate how it works like a leaf so this is the first prototype that we have developed for a factory wherein this beehive as we call it is installed in front of a jet set and in this we are pouring water from on the surface of the spots as the air passes through this and comes out the air is naturally cooled so this was an outdoor installation in summers when external temperatures exceed beyond 45 degrees in delhi in cr the local temperatures in the factory exceed beyond 50 degrees in this case we installed the cones which are in front of the system and we circulated water at a temperature of roughly about 22 to 24 degrees on the surface of these spots there is a drastic temperature drop in in the air that is coming out of the system at an inlet temperature of 50 degrees the outlet temperature we have measured is 36 degrees approximately it varies with the relative humidity and temperature of the atmosphere taking clues from the, the previous system we tried another configuration using instead of circular cylinders we wanted to increase the surface area of the uh, the terracotta that is available in this approximately we managed to increase the surface area 
approximately 50%. And using this brick tiles instead of earthen cones, we are getting more cooling effect in this case because of larger surface area. What we have developed, you know, both of these systems are open. And while terracotta is a beautiful material, both for its aesthetic properties and as a material property, so it retains water, so we don't have to constantly keep pouring water. And it also has good thermal mass. But whereas the biggest challenge in both these cases is that the flexibility is very low. We are stacking these one on top of another so that if you have to align it according to the sun angle or the wind, this system is not very flexible in that particular case. And structurally, if you want flexibility, then we have to introduce another structure that will increase the embodied carbon of the yield of the material. And another very important factor, which we thought was challenging in both these examples was the water splash and the wastage, because the water is being circulated on the surface of the spot, which is not really ideal when you want to go for taller buildings. So we started looking at other solutions where the water is not in circulating in open, like in a desert cooler or a an air cooler, but instead try and see if we can actually create a system similar to the way the evapotranspiration happens from the surface of these leaves from inside. So we came up with the, the design of an aerofoil where there are these two modules. One, the bigger module is for the structure and the smaller capsule here retains the water inside this. So the idea is that the water evaporates from the surface of it. We are not pouring the water directly on the surface of these aerofoils. So as the air passes through the surface of this, it can be naturally cooled. And what we also achieved because of the shape and the geometry, we can adjust the spacing according to the daylighting factors and shading. So it is flexible. So we, one can actually increase or reduce the spacing depending on which orientation they're placing it. And also the angle can be adjusted to, to block the direct radiation coming from the sun accordingly. The geometry is such that air enters from the wider aperture from the outside. And as it exits, first air compresses and then expands, like also helping in pressure difference that can assist in the overall cooling efficiency. So the way the system works is very simple. This can be mounted on any new construction or old. It can be mounted on a, an existing building in front of a window using an aluminum structure, which are running inside. These are pipes and we have water being run through the second cavity that we have shown. And these modules can be flexible, kinetic or static and exactly be optimized according to the solar radiation or the, the sun angle. So we are implementing this one of the projects that we are currently working in the studio. So this project is in Chhattisgarh in Raipur. The climate is tropical, wet and dry. And we have proposed this system on the west and south facade. What we have tried to do is to provide a slight bit of a variation in the angles to create a parametric wave, which is also pleasing to the eye. But more importantly, as the sun is moving in direction, it also can change. It, can, it also can bring in direct sunlight at different angles into the building creating a beautiful play of light and shadow inside. And one thing that must also be noticed is that while the, the right facade is the southern one and the left one is the, the western, we left the corner open based on the inputs from the client and in discussion to make the building look lighter. But that's also where there is thermal leakage and there is radiation coming from inside. But we have taken that as a, a design factor. And while the performance could have been definitely better had we covered both of these things fully, but based on the feedback from the client and also the aesthetic properties of the project and other factors we had to take this decision and but to make the best out of the situation we proposed the lift and the staircase core in this corner so that this area can be cordoned off so and keeping this the radiation coming from this corner not to enter into the usable space inside the building so the south facade and the west are covered with this passive cooling envelope whereas the northern side we have provided these windows that can help in cross ventilation throughout the, the system when used as a hybrid and towards the east we only have minimal openings because of adjacent buildings so this is how the system is mounted on the on the building and so the method of assessment that we followed is to check the potential of evaporative cooling through wet bulb depression and diurnal variations we have analyzed it through energy modeling simulations using ladybug in grasshopper for rhino space and uh, since the project is located in India, in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun exposure is uh, maximum on south and west face. So these are the two directions that we have considered for uh, the second skin. And water is considered at 22 degrees, which we are proposing to use the water stored in the underground water tanks for the, uh, the recirculation. So we have evaluated the, uh, the performance using passive cooling metals, which is just the shading and ventilation, and also hybrid cooling methods where we also proposed using air conditioners and to see how much reduction in air energy saving we can have with the conditioning. So uh, the parameters of assessment were the temperature variation and uh, the cooling loads and the, the reduction in capital cost savings. 
the impact on the overall building and energy consumption, the energy performance index, and also the reduction on operation savings. So uh, the impact on the environment is assessed based on the carbon footprint and the uh, water consumption. So uh, in the case considerations, we have positioned the, uh, the second skin at one feet distance away from the, uh, the facade. And uh, in, towards the glazing area, we have proposed roughly about 50% of the uh, window to be openable. We have proposed sliding windows where the windows can be stacked one of another, which can help in ventilation. The floor plate is of size 20 meters by 23 meters. And the total area of the building is 2145 square meters. So what we got is in terms of the performance, we, we have evaluated the cases without the double skin and with the double skin, just as a shading device. And with the shading and ventilation, where we are talking about as a passive system and double skin and water flow here, we are saying that the building can have air conditioning, but then skin with water flow can reduce the radiation onto the building to see what kind of a performance it has. And the last is double skin with ventilation and the shading also has water flow integrated into it. So what the study suggests is that at an average, there is a two to five degree drop in the temperatures when we are using just the double skin as a shading without any of the ventilation and water flow strategies. The variation is primarily due to changes in the temperature and humidity in the external environment. In a passive building, when we have actually proposed the double skin ventilation and water flow, the, the performance is much better. So on the right side, you can see that the cooling load of the building is 34.5 tons. And we have integrated the double skin into the project. There is a reduction of in 11% of conditioning. So the tonnage is got down to 30.8. And we have combined ventilation with double skin. It further reduced by approximately another 2.7 tons, bringing the, the consumption down to 28.1 tons. And by combining it with ventilation, water flow, and double skin, there is a 22% reduction in the, uh, the cooling load. And the cooling load is got down to 26.8 tons of air cooling. From the perspective of energy consumption, you can see that the total energy consumption of the building is roughly about 41,120 kilowatt hour annually. And in contrast, when we combine it with double skin ventilation and water flow, we were able to reduce it by 30% approximately in the, the EPI, which means the energy consumption is roughly about 31,000 kilowatt hours. So that is the savings that we're getting when we are using it with double skin and ventilation and water flow. So from a carbon footprint perspective, the CO2 emissions were reduced by 1,33,750 kg CO2 approximately. So uh, to run the system, we need approximately 210 kiloliters of water per year for cooling on the facade. So uh, this is the overall summary of the performance of the, of the facade. So you can see that all in all, like uh, we are able to reduce the energy consumption by 30%. But I must also underline that had we closed the, the corner of the building and also more shading and ventilation on the ground floor, this performance could have actually been better. We could have even like achieved up to 40% reduction in energy consumption. But we have considered this as a case. Where most of the times the design plays also a very important factor as a criteria. So we have deliberately left it as is in this particular case. Moving on, we've also studied another building, but this is beyond the scope of this paper. Just to put things in perspective, while we have studied a commercial building as the detailed case for the, uh, the research paper, we also compared it with a small residence of 40 feet by 40 feet plot area sites in Hyderabad, which is a primarily a tropical wet and dry climate. And we also have proposed the facade on west and south directions in here. We assisted with the natural ventilation system with evaporative cooling, also as a hybrid with air conditioners to see how Envelope cooling is behaving in a residential project, considering that if air conditioner make the, the comfortable hours to be 100% in a hybrid mode, that comfort hours reduced by 3.81%. Whereas when you're doing evaporative cooling with fans and national ventilation, the comfort hours reduced by 29%, which means 70% of the times so approximately the house is comfortable. But when we compare this 70% with the house without any kind of evaporative cooling and the natural ventilation, the comfort of us stands roughly at around 30%, which means that we are able to create 40% more cooling hours with the help of evaporative cooling integrated into building envelopes. So overall, I, what the, the study suggests is that uh, there is a tremendous potential to actually integrate passive cooling buildings with on build up of building envelopes to positively affect the, the thermal comfort of the buildings. And uh, in residences, it can take about 70% of the cooling load, whereas in the commercial buildings, it can reduce the, the cooling load by 30%.
to summarize this one can say that in in commercial buildings air conditioning can be a secondary role of trying to reduce the cooling load on the buildings whereas in the residences it's the other way around wherein it can take up 70% of the cooling with the help of passive cooling and natural means and we can depend on mechanical means only for 30% of the, the time by integrating envelope cooling into building envelopes with materials with low embodied energy like terracotta or any other material for that matter which is with less embodied energy which is porous in nature we can come up with biophilic solutions that can actually conform to the UN SDGs in creating sustainable and resilient habitats for our cities. And we see a tremendous potential in actually taking this research further. There's a lot of work to be done on evaluating the, uh, the performance in micro uh, controlled environments to evaluate and see what we can even do and extract the best possible results. But this study has been very promising so far. Thank you.